Installing SQL Server is one of the most straightforward tasks you must do as an SSAS specialist. First, we'll learn the installation process of the SQL Server and the activation of the SSAS service on it. Now let's go and install the SQL Server on our system. To start installing SQL Server, mount the ISO file from the SQL Server software. Then double-click on the setup.exe file. You must install .NET Framework before installing SQL Server. If you do not have it on your system, download it from the Microsoft website and install it. A dialog box like this figure appears. After a few seconds, this figure disappears from the screen and the SQL Server Installation Center window appears. This tool supports you in three phases planning, installation, and maintenance. The installation center window is first shown in the planning for the installation step. As its name implies, this part is responsible for some early planning before starting SQL server installation including checking hardware and software requirements for installation, the latest security and training documents, and reviewing all provisions for a successful installation, etc. The installation center window consists of two parts. The first option in the left column is planning. As shown in the figure, when you click on planning, some options appear on the right whose works are as follows. Hardware and software requirements for installation. Microsoft recommends that you run SQL Server on NTFS or ReFS systems. Microsoft supports installing SQL Server on a computer with the FAT32 file system, but is not recommended because it is less secure than the other two file systems. The minimum main memory required for installation is 1 GB. The Express Edition only requires 512 MB. However, such a configuration will not have maximum performance. As a general guide, you will need the main memory of at least 2 GB or more. Although SQL Server also requires at least 6 GB of hard disk space, the disk space you need will vary depending on the SQL Server components you install. Security Documentation When you click Security Documentation on the planning page, you will go to the Microsoft page in which general security considerations discuss. Separation of services is one of the most significant security measures. For this, use separate Windows accounts for different SQL Server services. Online Release Notes there are two primary sources for gaining information about all SQL Server features, Microsoft Documentations and Online Release Notes. Microsoft Documentation is a series of official online documents provided by Microsoft, while Online Release Notes are just the latest information about the release that does not necessarily find in Microsoft Documents. System Configuration Checker One of the critical tasks in planning is to check whether all conditions for a successful database installation are provided or not. When you click System Configuration Checker, a component called Setup Global Rules starts automatically. Setup Global Rules identifies problems that may occur while installing SQL Server support files. After the completion, the system displays how many operations are checked and how many are faulty. You must correct all defects before proceeding with the installation process. The last part mentioned that the SQL Server Installation Center page supports three steps. The first was planning, which has already been briefly discussed. Now let us examine the second step, installation.
the main stages of the SQL Server installation start over here. Just click on the Installation option in the left column to install. By doing this, Installation Options, SQL Server Installation, and its management tools like SSMS appear on the right side. If you have ever installed a sophisticated software product, you probably experience uncertainty feelings along with starting installation. This feeling comes from the complexity of the product and different questions that may arise during the installation process. This section helps you to have a better and easier installation by answering the questions you may face. Depending on whether you are doing a new installation or an installation on an already installed SQL server, the steps are slightly different. For example, the navigation menu on the left side of the Installation Center window is not the same for both. The Installation Center shows you several options for installing a database system and its components. After checking the system and preparing installation conditions via System Configuration Checker in Planning, click the Installation on the left column, and then New SQL Server Standalone Installation or Add Features to an existing installation. What appears next depends on whether you are installing SQL Server 2019 for the first time or a version already exists on your computer. In the former, first installation, the product key and terms license pages appear before the global rules page. In the latter, reinstallation, first the global rules page and then the product key and terms license pages appear. If this is the first time you install the product on this system, the product key and terms license will appear here. The global rules page is similar to what you saw in the planning step. As mentioned before, at this stage of the installation, set up global rules, check installation errors, preventing the accurate installation of SQL Server, and correct them before installation. If there is no error, click Next. After clicking Next, you enter the Microsoft Updates page. On this page, you can decide whether you want to use the Microsoft Update service to keep the installation up to date or not. I strongly recommend that enable the Microsoft Update service. To receive the product update, tick the Use Microsoft Update to check for updates, recommended, option. After clicking Next, the Install Setup Files screen appears and installs all the files needed to boot. By clicking Next, the Install Rules page appears. Click Next to continue. This page checks some installation rules to see whether or not the installation process can go on. The word Passed must be displayed in front of each rule in the Status column for proper running and continuing the installation. You can skip warnings displayed at this phase because they are just information for users installing the product. For example, the firewall option may be shown in warning status where there is no problem with continuing. If you do not have the product key, select the first option, SQL Server Free Edition. Otherwise, select the second option, enter the product key, and then click Next. Do not install a free version in the operational environment because the SQL Server expiration date will expire after 180 days. On the Product Key page, enter the 25-character key from the product packaging, then click Next. In the next window, tick the I accept the license terms on the License Terms page and click Next. In this window, we gotta select the components we need so that their installation process is carried out. This is where we need to install and activate the SSAS and the other services we need for the rest of our work. But before we start installing the services, I gotta explain a little about this window, and then we'll move on to the installation and activation process. These tools are installed on Drive C by default. Of course, you can use the desired installation directory. 
When you select a component from the Features section, its related description is displayed on the right of the page, Feature Description. The Disk Space Requirements section at the bottom of this page shows the space required to install ticked items. You can also specify a directory for storing shared components at the bottom of the page. All right, now let's go and select the components that we need. Here we need this option called Database Engine Services for our work and install the services relevant to the SQL Server Core, so we select it. Another option we need to choose is this one, which is called the Analysis Services. By selecting these two options, we have both OLTP and OLAP databases at our command and can meet all the requirements of SSIS projects. So after selecting these two options, I click on Next to enter the next step of the installation process. It is recommended that avoid selecting all as much as possible to not install additional services on your system. On the Instance Configuration page, select either Default Instance or Named Instance. Click the Default option to install the default instance. If the default instance has already been installed on your system and you select the default instance, the setup program will update it and allows you to install additional components. Therefore, another opportunity will be to install the components skipped in the previous steps. To install a new named instance, click Named Instance and type the new name in the specified box. A list of instances already installed on your system is displayed at the bottom of the page. MSSQL Server is the default named instance for the database engine. Click Next for going on. If none of the SQL Server editions is already installed under the default instance on the Windows operating system, select the default instance and click Next. Otherwise, select the named instance and type your desired name in the box to install SQL Server 2019. The next page, Server Configuration, consists of two tabs. Service Accounts. The first one, Service Accounts, allows you to determine the usernames and passwords related to all the components during the installation process. And Collation. In the Collation tab, you can choose your desired language. To choose the desired language, click Customize in the Database Engine, select the desired language in the opened window, and click OK. Although you can set an account for all services, this is not recommended for security reasons. This tab defines which user can access which SQL Server service. As you see, this tab contains four parts. Service specifies the name of the service you are going to use. For example, we can determine a specific user for the database engine service and another for the analysis services. Account name specifies each user's name who has access permission to each service. You can change the username by clicking on each cell. Password specifies the user password. Startup type specifies how to run the selected service. If you are installing other services, for example, analysis services, change the related collation similarly and click Next. This prevents any problems while storing and regulating the data of that particular language. In this step, tick the option Grant Perform Volume Maintenance Task Privileged SQL Server Database Engine Service. Changing the agent service's startup type to automatic is better. After this step, you will enter the Database Engine Configuration page, where several different tabs exist. Server Configuration, the first tab on this page, is used for security and authentication and allows you to choose the authentication mode for your database engine. The database engine supports two windows and mixed authentication modes. The Windows Authentication mode allows every user who logs in through Windows to access SQL Server 2. This means that Windows verifies the user's identity and SQL Server does not ask for the password and does not perform the identity verification. 
In this box, we specify which Windows user will be the SQL Server Administrator. Select the current user as the SQL Server Administrator using the Add Current User option. To connect to the database engine using Windows and SQL Server Authentication, select Mixed Mode in the Authentication Mode window. Enter the password in the Enter Password field and re-enter the password in the Confirm Password field. Then click the Add Current User to select the currently logged in username, or you can set the desired username via the Add option. Finally, click Next. What appears next depends on whether you selected analysis services during the installation process. If you select this service, a separate page will appear. After clicking the Next, you will be taken to the Analysis Services configuration page. On this page, like the previous step, click on the Add Current User option to select the current user as the Analysis Services Administrator. The second tab on the page, Data Directories, allows you to specify locations for storing files related to the database engine. In other words, it lists the default folders in which steps of installing various SQL Server components during the installation process will be stored. You can change them. And then click Next to continue. The last page before starting the installation process is the Ready to Install page. This page lets you see a summary of all SQL Server components installed during the installation process. Click Install to begin the installation process. After clicking, the installation process begins, and the installation time depends on the power of your computer hardware. The Installation Progress page displays the progress of the installation process. After completing the software installation, a window appears indicating the successful installation. This is the final window of the installation process, after which a message shows the complete and successful installation. If the service is not installed correctly, it will be displayed with a red icon. Click the Close button to complete the installation process. After installing SQL Server, you must restart your computer.